8NSA1 asks us to know that numbers that are not rational are called irrational. To understand informally that every number has a decimal expansion, for rational numbers show that the decimal expansion repeats eventually, and convert a decimal expansion which repeats eventually into a rational number. The first part would be to understand all of the subsets of real numbers. The second one would be to provide examples of numbers that are each in each subset. Third, to provide examples of irrational numbers and explain why they are not rational. To answer what is a decimal expansion. To provide examples to show that the decimal expansion for rational numbers repeats eventually. And to convert a variety of examples of decimal expansions which repeat eventually into rational numbers, showing the steps you use to do so. Let's take a look at the set of real numbers. The real number system is made up of rational and irrational numbers. Within all of the rational numbers, you have other sets of numbers, some of which you are already familiar with. You have the set of natural numbers, which are really the counting numbers, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and so on. Zero is added to this as an extra whole number within the subset of integers which also includes the negative numbers. The next thing you'll notice is that rational numbers are all described as fractions. One thing to understand is that integers and natural numbers are also fractions. Any one of those integers could be portrayed as a fraction such as negative 5 over 1, therefore making it a rational number. Notice that ratio is underlined in rational. The next thing we notice is ra irrational numbers are numbers that don't follow any of these properties. Irrational numbers are numbers that you cannot convert into a fraction. One of the classic examples of this is pi. Pi, of course, is decimal expansion, is 3.14159265355 going on and on and on without any pattern forever. It's not something that you can write as a fraction. The square root of 2, you will notice, is somewhere around about 1.4. It goes on forever also. Think about the square root of 2 as what number times itself equals 2? For that matter, what number times itself equals 3 or 5 or 7? In fact, it's interesting to note that the only square roots that are rational are those that are perfect squares already. 2 times 2 is 4, the square root of 4 is 2. 3 times 3 is 9, so the square root of 9 is 3. 4 times 4 is 16, so the square root of 16 is 4, and so on. Those are examples of square roots that are rational numbers. Anything that is not one of those is an irrational number. Let's take a look at decimal expansions. The decimal expansion, first of all, is the, all of the numbers that follow the decimal point. When you have a bar over, over the numbers, that indicates that all of those numbers repeat. 1 over 7 is 0 0.1428571428571. Five, seven, and so on, forever, repeating like that all the time. Something like 0 0.16 repeating is 0 0.166666, and so on, forever. Notice that only the 6 repeats, not the 1. One of the things that you will notice is that all these decimal expansions can be converted into fractions. If we look at converting fractions to decimals, this one is easy. 5 over 8 is 5 divided by 8. The 5 goes on the inside. Since 8 cannot go into 5, we need to add the decimal point and try to put 8 into 50 instead. 8 goes into 56 times. And 8 times 6 is 48. There is a remainder of 2. We carry down the next zero. 
8 goes into 20 twice. 8 times 2 is 16. 20 minus 16 is 4, giving us a remainder of 4. We carry down the next 0. 8 goes into 40 5 times. 8 times 5 is 40, leaving us no remainder. Long division is your best bet to converting fractions to decimals. A prime example of that is if you look at this Math is Fun site and scroll further down, you notice an example of converting one-third to a decimal. The process they use only approximates. It's not accurate. If you, however, use long division and try to divide 1 by 3, you will notice quite quickly that there is a pattern. 3 goes into 10 three times. 3 times 3 is 9. Subtracting, we're left with a remainder of 1. Carrying down a 0, we immediately see we're back to 10 again. And so on. And this is a pattern which will repeat forever. So converting fractions into decimals is as easy as long division. To convert repeating decimals into fractions, there are multiple steps that you need to follow. Firstly, let's deal with the numbers that all repeat after the decimal. Some of these are very straightforward. You may have noticed from the decimals expansion side, slide that numbers such as 1 over 9 is equal to 0 0.1 repeating. You can prove this by using long division. You will notice if you also use long division on 2 over 9, 3 over 9, 4 over 9, and so on, that you will get exactly that digit in the numerator repeating. The same can indeed be said for any pattern like this. However, if you've got more than one digit, you need to count that number of digits and use that number of nines, and then simplify if necessary. So that's an easy way to convert a decimal expansion which repeats into a fraction. There is, however, a major problem. What do we do if we have a decimal expansion where not everything after the decimal point repeats? 0 0.16 repeating is a perfect example. Let x equal 0 0.16 repeating. There is one digit repeating. Therefore, multiply times that power of 10. So 10 times x is equal to, move the decimal one space, 1.6 and a 6 repeating. The reason we want to do this is because we want to subtract the original equation from its multiple. When we subtract this, 6 repeating minus 6 repeating is just equal to 0. 6 minus 1 is 5, and we end up with 1.5 on the right side of the equation. On the left side of the equation, 10x minus x is 9x. And if we divide both sides by 9, we end up with x equals 1.5 over 9. Not something we like, so we multiply above and below by 10, giving us 15 over 90, which of course simplifies to 1 sixth. Another example will be 0 0.236, with both the 3 and the 6 repeating. Notice the 2 does not repeat. If you allow that to be x,
you count the number of digits repeating, and you multiply both sides of that equation by 10 to the power of that many digits. 10 to the power of 2 is 100. So 100x is equal to 23.636 repeating. Notice that the 2 does not repeat. When we subtract, we have 99x on the left side. Our 3, 6 cancels out. And we have 23.4 on the right side. Dividing by 99 returns us to x equals 23.4 over 99, which we simplify by multiplying by 10 above and below, giving us 234 over 990. To summarize, we have covered all the subsets of the real numbers. We have provided examples of numbers that are in each subset. We have provided examples of irrational numbers and explained why they are not rational, such as pi, the square root of 3, etc. We have covered what is a decimal expansion. We have provided examples to show that decimal expansions for rational numbers repeat eventually by using long division. And finally, we converted a variety of examples of rational expansions which repeat eventually into rational numbers and showed the steps we used to do so. That proved that we understand the difference between rational and irrational numbers and that we could convert between fractions and decimals in order to show this.